Hi, thanks for joining. So what I want to do today is I want to show how to get SharePoint to communicate with Excel documents. Um, so pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to have SharePoint talk to an Excel document in real time and update that Excel document and then also pull that information from Excel in real time back into SharePoint. Um, what we're going to be using as a facilitator for that is we're going to use InfoPath Forms, of course, and pretty much that's what I want to show today. So real quick, first thing you got to do is you need to make sure that you have a published Excel document. And when it's published, that's how you, that's, that's how you get it to communicate via the Excel services that are built in within SharePoint. So I have a document here and I have two fields that I've named. So one of the things, how, one of the tricks to getting this to work is you need to use name ranges. I haven't actually tested it with non-name ranges, but um, from what I've done so far, name ranges seem to work quite well. So I have two name ranges, cell A, and another name range, cell B, and I've already populated cell B with a number. Okay, so this is going to be the cell where I'm going to get it to actually pull information from SharePoint. And, I mean from the Excel document and cell A is going to be where I'm actually going to write back to the Excel document from within the full path forms or within SharePoint um, back to the document in real time. So first all we need to do is once we have our cells created in our document we need to publish the Excel document. So publishing is different than just saving back to SharePoint. You want to publish it to SharePoint. So how you do that is within Excel 2010 uh, you go to save and send and then you're going to see something called Save SharePoint. And you're going to see a Publish option. And you don't really need to fill out any of this stuff. It's not really necessary, but I just filled it out. Um, just specifying which sheet exactly I'm publishing and what specific parameters I'm publishing. Um, but again, that's not necessarily for this particular exercise. But the trick is you want to publish actually back to SharePoint. So I'm going to click on Save. And pretty much what's happening now is it's communicating back to, communicating back to SharePoint. And as opposed to simply just saving this document within um, SharePoint, we're actually publishing it. And as we publish it, we therefore utilize the Excel services. Okay, so now I'm publishing it back to my location. I already have the same version here in my Excel published documents library. So I'm just going to overwrite that and then save. And of course, replace it. So that's pretty much the first step that you need to do. And then from there, it'll automatically load your published document. And this is the version of it in SharePoint. So I'm just going to close that down. And I can close this down as well. So the next step, what we need to do is we need to go into InfoPath Forms. And we need to create some fields that will allow us to connect to our Excel document. So I already have an InfoPath form here that I've already created and I've already created the fields here. So this field, if you go to properties, it actually maps back to cell A, which is the same cell A range that I created in Excel documents, if you recall. And this field will map back to, map, map back to cell B, again, which is the range that I created in the Excel document. One other field we want to create is this is the sheet name. So if you recall, there's also in Excel, there's sheet one, two, and three. We need to create a variable that'll allow us to hold that sheet name value. So we have a sheet name uh, property here as well. And then of course, these are, are my particular fields within my form library or within my actual InfoPath form. So I have field A and field B. And again, what's supposed to happen or what will happen is field A is going to write information back to the, um, the Excel document and field B is going to pull information from the Excel document. Okay, so how that magic happens is we would create data connections. So I've already created the data connections here for us for the sake of time. So we have a couple of data connections here. So the first one that we want to create is we first want to open the workbook for editing. So how we do that is we simply need to how we do that is we simply need to I've already created the data connections, I've already set it up. Um, so what it's doing right now is it's connecting to a WSDL 
which is the Excel Services um, Wisdom um, web service. And as I access the open book for editing command, here are the parameters that are required for this particular operation. So I set the value to the location of my actual Excel published workbook that I just saved back to SharePoint. And then I click next, next again, and then I uncheck automatically retrieve data from the form is open, and then I click finish. And of course, I'm just going to click cancel for in this case. So right now what we've done is we've opened up the cell. We've opened up the workbook uh, from a web service perspective to allow it for editing. So now what we want to do is we then want to set the, the cell A. Okay, so I'm just going to go through here again. Again, we specify the wisdom, and then what we do is we then specify the get cell A operation. And again, these are para these are the parameters that are required for the cell A the cell A operation or set cell A operation. So again, all we would do is I just went to my currently open workbook, and all I'm doing is I'm just specifying the variables that I would need to allow for the web service to communicate back to the info path. So what I've done here is I've just already mapped all that out. So the session is based off the workbook for editing results that I get from my initial uh, web service from opening it. And again, these are all other variables that I've specified from the fields that I've, that I've created right here. Okay. So again, this one's a little bit complex. So okay, so I want to show you the wisdom file. Um, so, but to show you, I've already published these data connections directly into SharePoint. So I'm going to go to an older version of this same function, and I'm going to show you it from here. So these version, this version has not been published, so it should be able to show me. So I go to data connection, go to any one of them, and when I go to modify, it'll show me the actual wisdom. So this is the actual web service and of course the SOAP web service that it actually connects to. And then from here it retrieves all the possible commands that you can submit to that particular web service. And here they are, these are the range of operations that you can provide. So the ones that we use is set cell A, we use open workbook for editing, close workbook, and then we're going to be using get cell A, get cell A1. And yeah, those are pretty much all the services that we're using. Okay, so again, I'm going to close this down because this is an old one and this is the new and the most current one. So I'm just going to move forward here. So we've set the cell A, and now what we need to do is we need to then get cell A. So again, we're going to pull from that existing already populated Excel uh, range, range B that we specified in the Excel document. And pretty much this one is. Pretty much the same thing, just click next, next, and we're not going to actually specify any parameters. We're going to specify those parameters in real time when we actually are creating the, um, um, when, we're, when we're actually in the field and we're going to update it within info, within, within info path. So again, click next, uncheck automatically retrieve data, and then we click finish. And then last but not least, we have the close workbook. So we want to close that session so we can pretty much make sure everything's committed and written to the, the Excel spreadsheet properly. Okay, so again, just one parameter, and we specify our open for editing response. So essentially, we're going back to our open for editing uh, data connection, and then we're specifying that as the session ID parameter for it to know exactly what to close. Okay, so again, when you click next, and then you would uncheck anything and then click finish okay so that's that that piece so once we get our data connection set we then need to go into field a and we need to specify a rule that has no conditions so pretty much we want this rule to occur as soon as this field is updated so what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of actions so here we have our first action which is we're going to query and open up the workbook Second one, we're going to submit our data, so set cell A. And then this is, like I said, we're going to, remember I said when we get get cell A1, which is cell B, 
um, we're going to specify in this on the fly this is what we're doing so we're going to set the field session to the open workbook response which is the that session where we just created where we just opened up the actual workbook for editing and then here are our fields so we're going to specify the sheet name which is a parameter within the get cell a1 response and we're going to specify that and point it to our our particular field parameter here and then again we're going to take our range which is again another parameter within the get cell a1 we're going to we're going to connect it to our field b as you see here okay and again how you add these is you just simply open it up just like what I did and you'd specify it um, here you would want to take your current cell A and then you'd want to just go to that field and populate it so essentially what we're doing is we're filling each one of these fields up once you fill up each one of these fields we're then set to pull that query from our data connection which is get cell A and then of course once we're done we're going to want to close the workbook okay and once you've done that, you would just publish your document back into SharePoint. So I'm going to publish here. And then again, you'd specify your location where, you're, where you're, you want to, your form services will be running. And then you want to specify what type of um, content type or what type of how you want to publish this form. Uh, so I, spec I specified it as a site content type. And then here is my particular content type. I'll just update it again. And then again, here is the actual location where my template will reside. And these are any type of fields that I want to be updatable within SharePoint. And then we click publish. So now what's happening is it's sending the information to SharePoint. It's publishing our InfoPath form. And as well, with that publishing, we're keeping all that, all that data connection information that we specified. And essentially what's going to happen is we're going to update a field. That field is going to go to the Excel document that we originally published. Then it's also going to return the cell B field that we updated in Excel services or an Excel document. So I'm going to go back here. And incidentally, this is the data connection library that I created that gets created automatically when you want to publish your data connections into SharePoint and it's real quick real easy how to do that uh, right here you would just do convert to connection file and you would specify exactly where you want it to go to and so that's pretty simple um, so again I'm going to go to my input path form click on new and this is where it's publishing to. Click on OK. And again, so here's our form. So in case, so what if we had a user wanted to fill out information and say they put a field of 90 in here. And so when this field changes, when I click tab, what it's doing is it's connecting back to the Excel services document. And then what it's doing is also it's going to the Excel document and pulling this particular field as well. OK. I'm just going to close this down again. Looks like it updated the form. I'll close that down. I don't need it. So I'm just going to do it again. So again, we're going to open up our form. And it's time to do save and update. It's just, just because I published it, it's downloading the newest version. Okay, so now we have it again. So again, we do 89 and it's going back to the Excel services. It's talking to the Excel document, the workbook, and now it pulls our information. So again, this is all done in real time. It's updating the Excel document automatically. And um, yeah, pretty much that's all I really want to show you guys. Uh, just been doing something like this, a little bit more complex for the client, but I thought I'd just show it in a real simple um, simple form uh, to you guys here. So again, I don't really need to save the form. And now if we go back to our Excel publish document and we refresh, so as you can tell, time is a, should be updated. And now if we go into here, here we have our our field updated automatically, right? So here we have 89 and then we have 1024. 
So again, we can edit this. And we can change this to whatever number we want. And then we can maybe put that back. Oh, we can leave that at 89. And all we gotta do is just save this. So now we've pretty much manually updated our Excel spreadsheet. So we're going to run back here and go to our info path form again. We're going to try to do the same thing again. Let's see if we get some different numbers. Okay, so we're going to try this again. So again, I'm going to update 67. And we're going to pull information from the Excel spreadsheet. And there we have it again. Again, I'll close that. Again, no need to really save it. And we'll go back to our published document, our Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to take a look again. Okay, and there we have it. We have our newly populated information. Again, we took information from within InfoPath. And we've connected it through via the Excel services, WSDL or SOAP web service, populated an Excel uh, spreadsheet, and then we've also pulled information from the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so pretty much that's all I really wanted to show you guys, and just wanted to show you another cool feature that's available within SharePoint. And um, one of those things where, you know, it's all, it's all, limiting it's all our minds are what's limiting us with respect to the types of things that we can do within SharePoint and uh, this is just another idea and just different ways to realize solutions and whatnot better within our organizations